So as I said in part one in greater detail and a little bit in part two, this video is a bit tainted and opinionated because I am a woman scorned, much like Lisa Hochstein, because my ex had a double life and hurt me and left me for laundry model, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a lot in common in this situation. Let's just say it struck a chord. And then I want to thank Adam for doing this interview up in Adam. I'm sure it wasn't easy for him to do, and I appreciate having the content to comment on. Okay, so if you're a Katerina fan, you probably don't want to listen to this, but we're going to get into the last part, the third part of the interview that Adam did in Miami at Dr. Lenny Star Island House. Let's do it. That leads me to my next question of asking you, can you let us know what went wrong in your last marriage? With all due respect, all my communications with my ex have been through my lawyer because I want to leave this chapter behind me once and for all. And um, I mean, what you're asking me is, is involving another person who isn't here to speak for himself. So I would prefer to, to just leave that in the past where it belongs. Okay. I mean, it seems like I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, there's no, you're not going to unhurt by putting like more out there. Yeah, more out there and by trashing the other person or just like trying to ruin their lives or like making their family suffer. Like, it's just not me. That's so right. I, yeah, I mean, I had my reasons to walk away. But I've done my talking in court and I've done my talking with immigration and I won. <laughs> yep. And uh, now I'm going to leave this in the past where it belongs. You're closing the book and you're putting it back on the shelf. Okay. So the next station, have you received any positive feedback from people who have said like, I understand that maybe there's another side to this story or I've been in your position I mean, to be fairly honest with you, like I am, I feel extremely grateful to have a, a global support system, not only on social media, but of course my family, my friends that are all around the world and everybody who knows me in person and whoever sat down with me is, knows who I am. And most of all, ultimately I'm confident in who I am and I know my truth. So. There's, uh, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Also, the trailer came out, and now we have the first episode coming up of the new season of The Real Housewives of Miami. Let me ask you really quick. Last season, when that came out in the episodes with Lisa and Lenny and the back and forth and the, the comments, you better not have that girl in my house. And when, once people were able to identify you on social media... Was it, was the noise louder for you? Yeah. Sure. During the time of the show? And then did it quiet down? I mean, there has been like, unfortunately, a lot of, I mean, it's, it's really interesting because I just hope that the takeaway from this conversation for people who are watching this is that to not just blindly believe everything that's on social media. Kind of like this interview, which is on social media. By the way, this filter is figurative. Like a one-sided fictional narrative that's maybe in the press or a scripted TV show. It's just not real reality. Did you catch that? Subliminal message, scripted. Now, Real Housewives of Miami is more produced than other Bravo shows, I think, because it's kind of their new format, but it is not scripted by any realm of the imagination. Right. Um, but unfortunately, some people perceive it as such. And I think my message would be to people to exercise critical thinking. 
I think that Katarina thinks she's watching a Dishing Drama Dana episode. And given I can make gossip highbrow, but darling, this is not American literature class. Critical thinking really doesn't apply to a relationship that started in an affair and, you know, ended up being a gold digger's mission for whatever. It's pretty obvious what the relationship is at this point, I'd say. I mean, and did you see her licking her lips at Lisa when she went to confront Lenny at a club because he was with her? I just can't. I can't. She did this, look. I mean, she made it look hotter. I'm doing it on purpose like a Muppet, but you get the drift. She was like this. <laughs> so gross. So cheesy, really. Huh. Interesting. So it was, though, for you, just real quick to clarify, while the show was on and this was all playing out in front of all of the Bravo fans, I'm sure you received a lot more DMs, a lot more messages, as opposed to the show not being on. Is that correct? It's absolutely correct. But to be fairly honest with you, I switched my privacy settings on Instagram. And I can only advise anybody who is uh, being bullied online to, to change their settings so that... I mean, I don't even receive these hateful messages anymore because I have like the settings adjusted accordingly. I get that. Because I, I just think it's so important. In psychology, we say, like, your thoughts create your reality. And I think that what creates our thoughts is where we put our focus. And I choose to focus on, on light and positivity and not on hateful comments from any fake accounts. So just being very aware which knowledge you consume day to day, especially on social media, I think is very critical. Okay, so she did that because when you go to her page and you look under her posts, all of the comments under her posts are positive. Now, she had to protect herself because everybody knows that like there's no way that she only has positive comments in her posts, right? And she has 1.7 million followers and only like 130 comments under a photo, which is like what I get at 27,000 followers. So she had to do some sort of caveat on here to kind of acknowledge why when you go to her Instagram feed, she obviously has a setting on her Instagram for only positive comments to show up. Just say it. It makes a lot of sense. And now going into a new season of the show are you worried about all of this controversy like you don't know what's said and you don't film the show you don't know anything that's gotten based off of the trailer so far so good like there wasn't anything about you guys i, mean, I wouldn't use the word worried i think like, given the history i almost expect many instances being taken out of context but I understand, and I think most people understand that the media has to sell, and if a storyline doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead, right? Right. So, I think... Did you say if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead? Yeah. If it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead. <laughs> wow, I've never heard that. Okay. No, that makes sense. Now, from here, as we like start to wrap up, I wanted to know, what do you hope, like, the viewers, because you have your own fan base, you have over a million followers on social media. You have your own, obviously it's your own following, but this is the Bravo fans. That's who's going to see this. This is going to be a fandom that you have tapped into based off of this conversation, your first interview, right? My first, and I'm so happy to live with you. Thank you. I, it's your first interview. What do you want them to walk away with from this conversation? I think critical thinking and just, I mean, I, yeah, critical thinking and knowing that things are being always, I think everybody will understand that from a business perspective, the press has to sell, they have to sell clicks and it's just, it's just not, it's mostly not the truth that's being put out there. Can I ask you too, this sounds like a really random question, but like, with everything that you have going on, and I think that it's so easy for people to look around you and say, this is beautiful, this is amazing, this is great. But that sometimes doesn't mean anything to us. You know, sometimes it's the littlest things that mean the most. 
but as just me talking with you and trying to understand you, what are you grateful for? Because so much. I'm grateful to wake up healthy in the morning. I'm grateful for my relationship, grateful for the little superhumans that relationship brings into my life, grateful for my family back home. I am extremely grateful for, I think everything I learned in my divorce and everything that I learned through the adversity with cyberbullying and being painted in a untruthful light, just these lessons that I get to take away, such as, I mean, I've, I've learned resilience, I've learned courage, I've, I've learned forgiveness. She's learned forgiveness. What? This is like gaslighting at its all time. Like she should win an Oscar or maybe she should run for Miss America. She kind of has that energy, right? Like the Miss America energy. Don't we have some Miss Americas on Housewives? <laughs> and just to focusing on, on that and what you can take away is something I'm extremely grateful for because I think it's, for me, it's just the only way to do life. Is there anything that, based off of our conversation, like, because we're, now we're talking and again, a lot of people are going to see this. Is there anything that maybe we don't know about you that you would want people to know about you? Well, there's many things, but you just have to find out for yourself. Uh -uh. So you just have to keep digging. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think that you gave us a lot with the... Uh, I just wanted to keep to, I'm selfish, so I just wanted to know, I'm not selfish, but I know, thank you. I, I'm not, I'm really not, but I just wanted to keep digging and I'm like, what more can I get out of you as far as like, you know, but you have shared a lot. This is at the point in the interview where Adam has come to realize that she truly is as vacuous as she appeared on her Instagram and he's desperate to try to throw her a lifeline of any sort and she's just not grabbing that lifeline. Like he's tried like six times in this interview to, to, help her try to connect with the audience watching this video and have her maybe not come off as such a, you know, empty human, but he can't succeed. She just won't take any of the lifelines he gives her. You know what I mean? And poor Adam, I see him. He's like, what am I going to do? This is just not going the way I know. <laughs> he's trying. He's really trying. God bless you, Adam. You're so patient. I would have walked out like five minutes in, like, lady, look, I can't help you. <laughs> it's just, I can't. I hope you had fun with me and you forgive me for being so shady, but I just couldn't help it. But you know why. And uh, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And thanks, Adam, for this interview. I enjoyed dragging Katerina a lot today. <laughs> Mwah.